Jim Trotter, uh, I'm just gonna get uh, get the ball and give you a bounce pass and let you go ahead and do your thing here. Uh, but I'll just say the news. Obviously, not a surprise to many. He's been on the hot seat seemingly since he took the job. Matt Rule uh, was fired by the Carolina Panthers. They fired a couple of assistants, too. Steve Wilkes takes over as interim head coach. Wilkes, if that name sounds familiar to you, he was the one-and-done head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, They went 3-13. and He was in a rebuilding situation. He knew he was in a rebuilding situation when he took the Cardinals job. They gave him one year, they fired him. They drafted a quarterback for the second year in a row. Uh, And that quarterback was Kyler Murray. They bring in (coughs) Cliff Kingsbury. And that's what that that's where that is right now in in Arizona. They haven't really distinguished themselves as a credible contender. But what do you make of Tepper's comments, Jim, when he says of Wilkes? He's in consideration if he doesn't if he does an incredible job, then the job can be his essentially. Uh, what do you make of that? Um, just incredibly insulting, um, incredibly unfair. Not that the NFL is fair. And to a larger point, what it said to me, Michael, is I don't expect much to change when it comes to the hiring cycle in the NFL, because when you say He has to do an incredible job just to be considered. I mean, what are we talking about here? This was almost as insulting to me as 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 um, a couple of years ago when Arthur Blank said after Raheem Morris got that team off to a hot start after they had fired Dan Quinn and 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 Arthur Blank joked about um, that maybe Raheem would be considered you know, despite everything he had done to that point. So I think they won five of their first six after he took over yeah, or something said, like I think that. He says that. I think he said that he has to be undefeated if he goes undefeated. Is that what it was? Okay, like I couldn't remember the exact yeah, quote. It was, yeah. it was, it was pretty, so, it, it was ridiculous. Yeah, so I remember um, at the time I was doing a podcast and we had Arthur Blank on and I remember asking him about, asking him about that and I said, you know, can you understand why some would find that insulting that you would say that and then he I remember he said to me in essence that hey everyone knew I was joking and whatnot and my point to that was we are now in 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 a situation circumstance and time where you shouldn't be joking about this it's too serious you know you have black men who have spent much of their adult life trying to climb the professional ladder to become a head coach And then when you, as an owner, joke about what it would take for them to actually get an opportunity, I come back to that word like we were talking about early, an opportunity that they have earned um, and that they can't get, when you would joke about that, I can't begin to tell you what message that sends to these coaches, because I've talked to them. I, I know how many of them feel about that. And so, look, let me say this about David Tepper in this situation. It may have just been a bad choice of words that he used. Mm. I don't know David Tepper personally to say what his thought process is. I do know what the numbers reflect as it relates to NFL hiring of black men as head coaches. And they're disturbing. And the league acknowledges that they're disturbing. So I would say this, too. Let's not forget that Steve Wilkes assigned his name, attached his name to Brian Flores' lawsuit, discrimination lawsuit against the NFL and the owners. And so to me, I'm just saying this, that comment by David Tepper there would be in my arguments right up high about how owners feel about black coaches in the NFL, that if you do an incredible job and that's the key word, an incredible job, you'll be considered for the position. Mm. I don't know about you, Michael, but if I owned yeah. a company and I had an employee who was doing an incredible job, I'm not letting him out of my building. That's right. That's just me. Yeah, and, and you're right. I, I love I love what you're saying here, Jim. And, you know, 
I think it's such a difficult job to be a, the interim head coach because you don't really know what the expectations are from a number of people. So you, the expectations could be, hey, I, I'm, I was really was looking for it from the oh, from ownership. I was looking for an offensive guy. I was looking for a defensive guy. I was looking for a bigger name guy. And so from that standpoint, there's nothing you can do. It's not even about the job that you're doing. They're looking for someone else. You don't know if that owner is actually going to do the work and talk to the players about how you've done and how you have maybe changed the culture for the better, even though it doesn't show up on the record. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, when I was growing up, and this is a this is a coach we both have a lot of respect for, uh, rest in power. And you covered him. Uh, I didn't have the opportunity to cover him, but he was uh, the, the the head coach of my hometown team. When I was growing up, a guy named Sam Ritigliano was coaching the Browns. He got fired. I think the Browns at that point were one and seven when he got fired. So halfway through the season, they won a game. He was replaced by his defensive coordinator, Marty Schottenheimer. Marty Schottenheimer down the stretch. You know what they went down the stretch the final eight games. They won half of them. They were four and four, but it was so clear Jim that Marty Schottenheimer had changed that culture. Even though he only won four games. He won four games 500 nothing. You no know, bare bones. You know Marty, you know, very uh, very professorial uh, just hey, very fundamentally sound. It's not gonna be any fireworks bells and whistles, but he was the right guy for the job. And clearly, he helped turn the Browns around, got him to AFC Championship games. When he moved on from Cleveland, did the same thing in Kansas City. He was a turnaround specialist. In my mind, uh, Marty Schottenheimer is a Hall of Famer. But based on the standards that these guys are uh, verbalizing now, Marty Schottenheimer would never, he never would have been hired as an interim coach who only won four games. So you really can't even look at it as a one loss thing. It's what are you doing? Have you done anything? to stabilize the situation or actually improve the situation that you've inherited without benefit of training camp, installing your own system, picking your own coaches, all the things that interim coaches just kind of run into and you're expected to be functional when you haven't created anything that's going on in the environment. I think David Tepper should be ashamed of himself. He really should give um, Steve Wilkes the inside track to the job because he's got the most crap that he's got to deal with. Anyway, Jim, I appreciate you, man, speaking truth on this program. Good to see you, brother. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.